Hi, my name is Scott Snow. I'm a sophomore physics major. I'm on the UCLA track team, and this is my game, Strings. The name of the game changed a lot. The current name and the final name uh, of the game is Strings. It was only just recently um, that I thought of the name Strings. I was just like in my logic class, and I was like looking at like strings of symbols and just like kind of thinking about the way that like we can like derive meaning from like sh strings of symbols. All of a sudden I was like, my game is just strings of symbols. I started like saying that to myself, asking what people thought. Um, strings like caught on like other ones hadn't really and uh, just kind of stuck. I think I first started working on the game when I was like six or seven. I started working on like this game back then, played it when I was a little kid and then kind of forgot about it. It wasn't until my senior year of high school, after AP tests, when everyone was kind of bored and looking for something to do, that I just remembered this game I used to play as a kid. I started playing it again uh, with like regular playing cards. And a couple of things like became apparent really quickly. One uh, was regular playing cards were not good uh, for the game. The other thing was that um, the game was designed by a seven-year-old. <laughs> and um, there was like something there, but it needed to be worked on. So since then it's been about uh, like a two-year process of like figuring out what makes a exciting, elegant game and uh, putting that into play with mine. I think one of like the most interesting and unique things about the game is that it can be played at like different levels of complexity. So in the first level of the game, um, it's very simple. You play with the uh, backs of the cards face up and it's just about uh, connecting your cards in lines. The aim of the game is to get your cards into lines of like just your cards, kind of like tic-tac-toe. The only restraint that you have is a card that you play has to be connected on a side to another card on the board. In level two, what's important is just what kind of symbol it is. There are four kinds of symbols and they each represent a different classical element. The circles are the air cards, the X's are the fire cards, the triangles are the water cards, and the squares are the earth cards. Now, as you're trying to get your cards in strings, which is four cards in a row, that string has to have each one of the elements. The order doesn't matter, it just matters that each of the elements is there. Getting to level three, game gets a little more dynamic. Once a card is placed on the board, in level three, it can move to a different spot. So what you can do to win the game kind of grows. Like initially we're just placing, uh, now we're placing and moving. Level four is uh, you know similar to all the other levels. The final aspect of the game though, which makes it uh, that last bit of complex is that now cards can take other cards. It's very similar to other games people are used to, like chess or checkers. Um, if your card is taken, it's knocked out of the game, not to come back. So to win the game, you have to align four of your cards in a row, do it twice, but to make it a string and not just four cards of yours, it's gotta be a fire card, a water card, an air card, an earth card, in any order. Once you can get two strings, the four elements together like that, uh, like that's a game.